whole show, how perfect would that be, right? Uh, yeah. I've been gone for a month, and it's all of a sudden he's completely converted. I've been gone a month. <laughs> One short little month, and oh, here it is. Oh, man. Rick I could Pitino. do it. Rick I Pitino. Could do you could. Uh, so it is that uh, Tom is here for the week, the rest of the way. That's good stuff. Happy to have you back here seated alongside, sir. Good day in for Florida State yesterday. We'll start with that. The baseball team continues its role. They pummel a good USF team, and they do it in all the right ways. The basketball team wins. Can't miss from the field. Uh, absolutely the best offensive performance of the season. Uh, Mr. Watkins continues to be uh, a really formidable player. He's such a goofy guy. Like What I mean by that is, there's no one thing that Jameer Watkins does that's special. It's just that he does a lot of things very well. And when you score 90 points, you're going to have a lot of moments for a lot of guys. Darren Green shot well. Chandler first Jackson. First time in forever since Darren Green shot well. Chandler Jackson had a run there. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. He scored his first four baskets. But, I mean, you're talking about driving from every angle to the basket, making shots. And then Primo Spears was awesome down the stretch. He was. You know, it's fun. Uh, I, I take it with a grain of salt. A win's a win. You're happy. I don't want to degrade the win. NC State's got one good win on the season. They beat Clemson on the road earlier this year. They don't really defend. Uh, Florida State didn't defend all that well uh, last night, but that's a win, and it's a much needed win. And frankly, if Florida State is gonna have a shot at the, dare I do it, because there's still life there, uh, they're gonna have to really see it work out in their favor. They got an opportunity here. If you think about, it. they have three coin flip games remaining on their schedule. As I pull this up. They traveled to Georgia Tech this Saturday. They should beat Georgia Tech, and they, they, they're going to have to. But now we never play well at Georgia Tech, so I'm not assuming anything. Right. We always struggle there for whatever reason. That Georgia Tech, when we go to Georgia Tech and play them in basketball, I feel like it's the perfectly uh, drawn-up scenario that you and I did before the Boston College game in football, where we talk about the things that happen over the course of a maddening game when you know you're going to lose because all of the dumbassery that make up grand upsets come into play, where you're like, oh, second and seven, run up the, I think the ball's on the ground, Jim. Yeah, that kind of stuff, like that happens at Georgia Tech. You're like, oh, okay, so they just bricked three straight threes, got all three long rebounds, and an and one after the fourth one. Yes, okay, great. Yeah, and then for us, it's, you know, put back attempt. Oh, well, here we go. Another rebound, Florida State again. Yeah. How does it not go in, partner? Yeah. How does that not go in? There's oh, a lid goodness. on the basket right lid. now yep. early. There's I just uh, – that's a bunny. You got to make that. You know, and then, make, you know, they well, magnify the problem. They fouled afterwards. Uh, Wes, you know, <laughs> these must be double rims, Wes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going Old on. Old playground here. days with the wind and the double rims is killing them. Yeah, so it's very uh that's what happens at Georgia Tech. Oh, and they got Florida State for a three second count. Always some nonsense. Like I and then usually to add insult to injury, on the heels of pointing out that they oh, they got Florida State on a three second count. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know about that, Bob. Look, his foot clearly got the oh, that's a tough call. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That is seems like they were looking for it, like looking for one. We'll take that under 12 media timeout, and the score is Georgia Tech 10, Florida State 9. We'll yeah. be right back after this. You're like, Jesus. And it's another hour and a half of yeah, this. Yeah, there, there we, go. we go. Next thing you know, it's 52 all with a minute to play. Tom and I are getting into an argument about the refs need to let him play. <laughs> well, you know, what was interesting is last night, last night, I yeah. thought, especially in the second half, I think four out of our first five baskets, you could have called harm and a plus one. Mm -hmm. I mean, really? Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, all right, you're, you're going to let them play. This is how we go. Then North Carolina somehow, some way draws nine fouls with nine minutes to go in the half of North Carolina State, I, of course, excuse me. But I don't understand other than to say consistent incompetence at the collegiate officiating level, specifically in basketball. Oh, well, but buddy, how you're letting them play in the first four minutes of the half in Florida State, I'm, again, harm most every single basket near the rim mm -hmm. because what's our usual complaint is that Florida State doesn't attack. They're shooting a lot of perimeter stuff, yeah. so there's a foul disparity. Well, that's mostly on us. Man, we're attacking the 10 last night. We're getting harmed and nothing. And then the next thing you know, the fouls are 9-7 with 10 minutes to go. It's frustrating. They get the win. They persevere. They were good on offense. Uh, that win, let me put it into perspective for us, though, for real. Again, that's not out of the realm of possibility. I haven't rang this damn bell basically since Tom left. Must have been in mourning. 
But honestly, it's I think been, you shook it once or twice. I have. I shook it because it was it was dying. But here's here's the deal. Okay, so you got the game against Georgia Tech. They're they're five and twelve. Uh, come on, guys, you're, you're gonna have to win that. Uh, following that, you have a game at nine and eight Pitt on Tuesday the fifth before closing out the regular season at the TLC Double C against a team we own and who has had a miserable season, which has served as much-needed schadenfreude for all of us, Miami, who went to the Final Four a year ago, is 6-12. and 12. <laughs> Grand opening, grand closing. Hope you enjoyed that run. Back to back into your hole. Oh, boy. And, oh, by the way, you've been owned by our ass. Matthew Cleveland. Mm. That's a mm. tough, tough decision. Mm. I'm going to go play for a Final Four team. Yes, and suck. And so we play them on the ninth. And so, you know, they all, all three of those teams have at least one really good three point shooter, not something we guard well. So I can't assume wins there, but if Florida state were to put it together, those are all winnable games on the other side of that coin. You could be legitimately sitting at 18 and 13 and 12 and eight in the ACC headed to the ACC tournament, uh, which is in D.C. Hey, how about that? An ACC tournament that's not in a Carolina state. There you go. Uh, That's the last one ever. Yeah. And I would argue if Florida State is 18 and 13 and 12 and 8 in the ACC, uh, you can make a case. You can make a legitimate case. So hang in there. I I get it. If I'm listening to this and I'm diehard and I care deeply about Florida State's future. You know, I'm glad they won last night. I'm happy that they've played better this year than the last two years. They do fight. They don't look incompetent. They are lacking in some areas. In particular, they can't guard opposing guards. They struggle to close out on the three-point line. They don't shoot the ball well themselves last night being an outlier. These are all things that anger you, but they're bigger. They're more athletic. They play harder smarter than they did the last two years. They have an emerging star. They have some pieces to give yourself some hope, but it's all half measures. It's all kind of baby steps towards what? Towards making the tournament next year? Perhaps, perhaps, maybe. But you see problems looming for this program as it stands right now until this university can get out of the ACC and have more money to pass around because I don't, you know, basketball has not been a priority here for a very, very long time. That's part of why Ham's tenure has been considered very, very successful. If if you poured money into the program the way, say, other ACC schools do, like Duke and Kentucky, I mean, Duke and North Carolina and the SEC Kentucky and others around the country that we can cite, that wouldn't be a good tenure. Ham would have been run out of town years ago, but because we don't and never have, and there isn't a lot of money for it, it's been a very good tenure because of two separate lengthy runs where the team did very, very well. I'm just looking big picture because we're winding down the year. And so I again, if I'm listening to this, I say, okay, to what end? I'm 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 happy they won last night. I'm happy they play hard. I'm happy we look competent, but we're not where we want to be. That's a fair assessment. A year ago, baseball was so bad, it felt like the culmination of things having gone off the rails around here in baseball. And you thought, what a what a way for your new head baseball coach, former All-American here at Florida State, Link Jarrett, to start his his time. And I had confidence coming into the season, Tom, that this would be a better team just based on who they added, the transfers they brought in. Some of the talent that made up last year's disappointing season showed signs of being very, very good. For example, everybody knew Tibbs could hit. Tibbs could really hit. He's just sweet. And That plays on a bad team, good team, great team. He's a starter anywhere. He's that kind of a player. And that remains uh, to be the case. That that is true. That's what they have. But they didn't have any pitching a year ago. They had about a a starter and a half after the injuries. Really struggled uh, in all the fundamental areas of baseball. They didn't pick it up. They didn't run the bases well. They struck out incessantly. They didn't move runners over. They didn't do anything well. It's a... It's it's a brief set of data points so far, but all of them point to this team being much, much, much better. And for a lot of reasons. You know, Whitaker gets out of the first. We sat together yesterday down the third base uh, line there. That was beautiful. That was gorgeous. Gorgeous day for baseball, it wasn't was. it? Yeah. And he gets out of the first, gets that double play. 
but then goes from there. No walks. Defensively, FSU played really well, turned big double plays when they needed them. That slider produced the ball into the ground. They were able to get those. Ben Barrett was pretty good when he came in. Uh, the lineup, I've been saying it for the, since the start of the season, is deeper. They all hit for power. Tibbs with two bombs last night. I looked him up because I wanted to see if he was at four or five home runs. And and I know, but you know, the two grand slams and I've seen him hit hell. I've seen him hit four of his home runs. Um, I didn't realize it until I was looking at all those numbers. You know, he hasn't struck out yet this year. I was not aware of that. No, he has not no. struck out yet this year. Last night he gets the opposite field home run. I'm going to tell you right now, Tibbs probably barring injury going to hit 20 plus home runs this year. Uh, he's 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 a well, bat to ball guy. He's I mean we're not in March and he's got five right. Yeah, so, he's yeah. he's he's a baller. Uh, made a nice defensive play in the outfield, which is not what he's known for. Everybody picked it last night. Everybody they did. Your third baseman made, Cam made a great play at third base. Two, I thought two excellent plays. Yeah, well, he's was, just played well defensively too all year. He's not hitting, but he's played well. So and that's far. fine. Yeah, if yeah, you've yeah. got a deep enough lineup, you can have a nine hole hitter. Now, hopefully he goes over the Mendoza line, but like you can he's have a, hit. He'll hit. you can have a free out in a lineup that's lengthy. This lineup does appear to have protection for a lot of its key bats, which is also part of it. It's contagious. Oh, yeah. When you have protection behind you, there was a situation last night where Cam is at the plate. It's uh, second and third one out. Yeah. There, there's an open bag there, man. Now, but Tibbs is, <laughs> but Tibbs is on deck. That it changes the nature of how you approach the situation. Last year, if Tibbs is up in that situation, walk his ass, or you just pitch around him and see if you get him to swing and yeah. induce something. Like that's the difference. This this lineup does appear to be deeper. Much. Their swings appear to be on plane and in the zone for a long period of time. It's not well. They might run into one. A lot of these swings that they have, the approaches you can see are contact laden. And again. Watching them pick up the baseball last night, I thought Diamez Ross was outstanding in center field, too. Oh, he's he's a really good player, too. He's a really good player and sets the tone. By the way, they're only averaging offensively going into last night five strikeouts a game. So they're not striking out a ton, and they strike out a lot of hitters. So this is a good combination. If, if you haven't bought in yet, I think it's time to start paying attention. Also, I think it's been really smart on Link Jarrett's part to have Whitaker, it worked out because of a rain delay, the first, um, not a rain delay, a washout completely, the first series of the year. But I have to admit, there must have been a moment in there after it happened the way that it did and they were con contemplating what to do with the Tuesday night JU game at the time. I'm I, There's a part of me that says they sat around as a staff and he said, you know what? Let's be honest about this. These, these Tuesday games are big games. They're regional teams that we're going to be playing. They're teams in the state that we need to beat, okay, for a lot of reasons. And I'd like to have a weekend guy to face JU, who was really good last year. I'd like to have a weekend guy on a Tuesday to face USF, who's a veteran club with a lot of good hitters. I'd like to have a weekend starter on a Tuesday to face UF and get – I think they kind of realized that they they backed into something that turned out to be smart. They'll piece it together on a Sunday, but they have a weekend guy. It's Whitaker. He's just pitching Tuesdays right now. Yeah, and he shows the mental toughness. You talk about it. You got the first inning where there's a lot of hard hit contact. I mean, a lot. There is the only time that there isn't. Does he get the one strikeout? I, I don't even remember. But yeah, it's the double. No, it's a line out to center. So you got a right. line out to center and a double play. So everything is hard hit in that inning. Then you score a bunch, and what does he come out and do? It's a shutdown inning. Oh, yeah. That's a more modern term, but the shutdown inning of where when you score, put a zero up the next half. Keep it rolling. And then he did it again when he was on the ropes. He was on the ropes in the fifth inning. We watched that. That was close. I think he was one hitter away from maybe Link making a move. Well, it's a great defensive play right. by Tibbs to throw out the runner at second. Exactly. And then he comes back in, and here's the mental toughness. That's the mental toughness. Strikes you, out the side. Yes, exactly. That's – I don't they're not always going to win. They're not they're not going undefeated here. No, no, but but no. the point is that you're seeing a lot of these moments from the staff, a lot of these moments in the field and at the dish where all of them show mental toughness. Where I, this is where I think that the roster turnover helps. You bring in a lot of fresh perspective so it's not an oh here we go again clubhouse. You've got an, a lot of dudes with chips on their shoulders. It's very much like what coach Norvell did with the football program. You bring a lot of guys who feel either slighted at their previous institution or they're getting an opportunity that they've never had before. You don't have time to worry about, oh, here we go again. This is it for me. This is my opportunity. And I think that helps foster the mental toughness that we've seen so far. Now, they're going to be playing better competition. They're going to lose some ball games. 
That's of course. The, that's a higher level of adversity. But man, we need to crawl before we can walk. And right now we're crawling the hell out of uh, around uh, Mike Martin Field. Well, undefeated to start, you're stockpiling wins to give yourself some leeway when you hit the inevitable lull that every team does where some things go against you because baseball's weird and it happens and your starter who's your weekend guy has a bad day and then somebody makes a colossal error in the eighth inning and you lose two straight and the sky's falling. You got you to gotta stockpile those wins and put yourself in a nice position. By the way, uh, so today is linebackers and defensive line at the combine tomorrow. It really, things get underway. You start seeing televised stuff on NFL network beginning tomorrow, but you'll get numbers today. I want to talk about this when we come back. It's a big, it's a big week for a few guys. The, the Florida state players at the combine, if you go, whether you're looking at Bucky Brooks or wherever you want to look, I look at about 15 different draft analysis guys that are paid to do this and either former players or scouts at NFL um, franchises. And then I try to put them all together and figure out just about if I were a betting man, where I'd project a guy to go based on these projections uh, that you can find all over the country. Obviously there's this, a cottage industry started years ago, certain around the draft. Some people do it better than others. Florida state's players as a whole, I don't think are as well thought of as perhaps we would, would have guessed uh, midway through the FSU football season. And, I, and I'll tell you, there's a guy in particular who I think has to have a very good combine, and it's Keon Coleman. And we'll talk about that in a second. It's Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Hey, folks, it's me, Mac and more, spokesperson for Tallahassee's favorite Apple and Mac product store, Mac and more. We all know what Mac is all about. It's your MacBooks, iMacs, Apple Watch, iPhones, iPads. We've all got them. But what's really cool is the and more. And there's a lot more at Mac and more. They can help set up your new gear, migrate and back up your data, teach you new tricks and how to use everything better. And if something costs too much to fix, they'll tell you the truth. There's a lot more at Mac and more. See for yourself at MacAndMoreSystems.com. Or you can take it from me, Mr. Mac and more. Hey man, have you heard the sound? The Talfo Jewelry's the best in town. The rings, diamonds, earrings, bracelets, and more. Then Talfo Jewelry, Jewelry so. When was the last time you randomly did something nice for someone that means a lot to you? Now, I say this every day at the end of my show for everybody to be a better person today than you were yesterday. Well, one way to do that is to drop into Pintalpa and get a gift for someone who deserves it. It'll brighten their day, their week, maybe even their year. You don't have to wait for a holiday or special occasion, so don't wait to go check out a true local gem serving Tallahassee since 1988. Now, sing along with me, and I'll see you at Pintalpa. Have you been in a wreck on I-10? I'm Carrie Roan, shareholder and attorney at Facebook Brooks Law Offices. Our number one priority is helping you get the settlement you deserve after your accident. We can help find the proof you need to settle your claim fairly. At Facebook Brooks, we partner with Roadproof to record all interstate traffic camera footage from Jacksonville to Pensacola. If you've been in a wreck on I-10, our footage could be vital in supporting your case. Call Facebook Brooks today, 850-777-7777. system doesn't check with you before it takes a break that's why we're always ready to help any day anytime anywhere and with our annual service agreement there are no overtime charges ever at bear no heating and air we will always be there for you there no heating and air conditioning without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running everything would suddenly stop hospitals factories schools and power plants they all depend on you no matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack, but not with ZipRecruiter. Its powerful technology actively finds and invites qualified candidates to apply to your job. 
So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you the needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Back by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness, two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center, online at orangetheoryfitness.com. Late in the first round here, Tom, to take uh, Keon Coleman. So let me just project this out there to you really quickly. Uh, all, all kinds of directions the Bucks can go. They need a lot. You can go offensive line. It's a safer pick. It's what I'd do. But if you're if you're going to look at the receiving group and those that could be on the board at the time that you draft. And let's say you want to go receiver because you're not sure you can sign Evans or you want to sign Evans, or even if you do sign Evans, it's going to be short term and he'll be on his way out soon. So you need the future of the rec- uh, at the receiver position. Okay. So there's a lot of reasons why the Bucs are, are looking at wide receiver. They're going to draft one in this draft. We know that. We don't know if it's the first round or not, but they're going to draft a wide receiver. And they need to, frankly. Uh, all right. We know, obviously, Marvin Harrison Jr., is off the board. He's the first receiver taken. He's probably the most sure thing. By the way, that's a sidebar topic, which is if you're not in love with these quarterbacks and you're one of these top four teams, do you just punt on all of that and say, I'm taking Marvin Harrison Jr., who I think is can't miss? Like, can't miss. Do we all – I think most of us would concede that's probably the most can't miss pick in this draft of the skill position players. Yeah, agreed. I like I there could be dudes in this group of top 10 who have better careers, but if you're talking about percentage chance of bust, like Yeah, yeah almost none. Unless he gets hurt, people get hurt. But that's yeah. how can't miss is defined, right? right? It's like, you know, the lowest chance of a bust. Yeah, I think that that I think Marvin hard. Harrison Jr. Yeah. is probably the lowest chance of a bust on the board at wide receiver. And I really don't know that it's that close. Like it's that dude, there's a big separation, he's a freak, certainly helps to have Hall of Fame pedigree. Um and you know, look, he's a bigger version of his dad. He is that kind of great route runner, has awesome hands, and he's bigger and stronger. I'd just like to see, because the first contract is easy. Where you get drafted, it's basically a slot. You know, there, there may be some guarantees move around, but, I mean, it's basically a slotting. For that second contract for Marvin Harrison Jr., I hope dad is the agent <laughs> in that particular negotiation. How uncomfortable is that moment where you have to say something negative about his son? As a negotiating tool. Oh, no. It's too bad he's not a baseball player because he could have gone to the arbitration hearings. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I would ban him from that. But if he's an acting agent, you have no choice. Yep. You know, your son doesn't walk enough. Duly noted. Is what that- neighborhood do you live in, Phil? Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? He doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't walk. Is that right? We don't think he does. You Is sure that- about that? Is that right? You sure about that? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, two times. One time Harrison. <laughs> Harrison uh, you know happen. what? Let me get back to you on that. You know, let me check the maybe numbers. Maybe my numbers are off. I, you know, I was thinking about that coming in this morning, that maybe my numbers were – it didn't seem right. It didn't seem right. Maybe we compiled it wrong, Marvin. I apologize. I'll double check it. So I, I, I'm taking – I guess this is a long-winded way for me to ask you of the receivers that are going to go first round. First two rounds. 
How many of them are you taking over Keon Coleman? And it's a hard exercise because we never got to see, outside of the first few games, the real Keon Coleman. Much of this year was spent from Keon Coleman kind of just nursing a nagging injury that never really let him run all out in the way that he did against LSU. The LSU game tells you a lot. But if I'm a detractor of Keon Coleman, I say, well, LSU didn't cover anybody all year long. Nobody. Everybody had a career game against LSU's defense. So good job if I'm a detractor. And it's a fair point to make. It was historically bad on defense. Now, Clemson's defense, however, was very good. And he makes the play of the game and, you know, often proved that no matter who he was facing, his number one attribute is that he catches the ball in traffic time and again. He's the man that comes away with the football. Now, that's partly because he's six foot four and big, 220-ish, 215, 220. He's a big receiver with big hands, and he's a basketball player. Remember, he played at Michigan State, so he can jump. He wins the contested football. That's a big deal in the NFL. you got to be able to do it because you're not going to be running free like you do in college. Dudes are going to be on you. So that's a great stamp of approval for that guy. I want to see what he runs. I need to see what he runs because I think there are some serious questions after the back half of this year about his speed, his overall speed. Yeah, It's a very important combine for him for the 40 purposes. I'm assuming he's going to run it. It feels like every 10 minutes somebody says they're not going to do this. He's not not in a position to not run. I agree, but he could push it to pro day. He could do that, but he's got to run at some point. You don't want to go all in on one day. You yeah. want to have two days to where, you know, your pro day workout is, again, in front of multiple scouts, not just working out from one organization. Yeah. And you could say Indianapolis was a that was a bad day. Yeah. But here's my 447, you know, or whatever it's going to be. The thing is, that would be the only attribute that I need to see out of Keon, because it's not just about catching the ball in traffic. This is the benefit of doing some work with Dominic Robinson last football season. Somebody who knows a thing or two about route running versus what a, a member of the secondary is thinking. He's a bully in mm-hmm. how he runs his routes. Mm-hmm. He will step he's big. on like the idea of stepping on toes. You know, that, that's something that the pros will talk about. Yeah. Receiver coaches. He knows how to do that effortlessly. He knows how to fake with his hips or his shoulders as he's in full sprint and get somebody to bite on a move like the dynamics of running a route. He understands the dynamics of catching a ball in traffic. As you said, of course, he knows how to do very, very well. If he's got any kind of 40. This is where I'm coming from personally. If he's got any kind of 40, that dude's going to play a long, long time because a lot of dudes just have speed and they don't know how to do the physical thing. He's got the hard part down to me as a possession receiver. The question is how much of a burner can he be? And to answer your question about what would you do with Keon, it depends on the team. If you have a one entrenched, oh, then you really like let him. him grow as a two yeah. and get his confidence going. I don't know that I would draft him to be the number one right away out of college. There's three guys that are going to go for sure ahead of him. Adunaze there at, at Washington. Uh, Rome is a great player and he's going to go ahead of him. Uh, Malik Neighbors is going to go ahead of him. Yeah. Uh, better prospect. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to go ahead of him. Uh, some people say Byron Thomas Jr. will go ahead of him. So we start getting for Keon into the range of are you the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth best receiver in this draft? That's debatable. Dep- in a deep receiver draft. It's this a, is, yeah, I'm yeah, not making this is not a shot. I mean, people like Troy Franklin at Oregon uh more than him. Some people think uh, uh the Mitchell kid at Texas people like more than him. I mean, he, he, he's a good player. Yeah, that's over the top. Uh, see what I'm saying? Yeah. But I mean, uh uh, the Roman Wilson, the other Roman, the, the, that kid at Michigan is is a big time player, body type. You know, so this this is all debated. Somebody will fall in love with you, or they won't. I think the combine's important for him, especially. I think he's got to interview well. I think he's going to have to run well. If that happens, the other skills are on display. We know that depending on where you rank a prospect going into the combine, it doesn't necessarily pair with where they're drafted. It's about need and who's on the clock when you come up. And it's, But Keon is largely thought of to be a top 45 player in the draft. Now, so you just do the math. You, we'll see. He's not going to fall out of the second round. He's probably a first-round pick, but it, we don't know. If any of those two or three other guys that I just named are higher on the board, 
then he will fall to the second round, and that would be bitterly disappointing for him given what we thought he was coming into this season and probably what he would have done had he been healthy. Uh, right, and given what he is, I think, objectively speaking. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I believe he is a first-round receiver. Like, I, I just – there's enough there. I think, first of all, the skills that I listed out before are in – and that's that's just done and locked up. Yeah. The 40 time we'll see. He's going to interview well. He's very he's much a pro. He's already a pro. That's what I'm saying. He's already got the mindset of just let me get to work. Uh, the reports about what kind of teammate he is, it's going to be glowing. We've seen it with our own eyes at practice. He's taking second, third year players who have no chance to crack the two deep and working on them on working with them on route dynamics on what to do to you know get off the line of scrimmage. I, I got to interject here. I think this is so fascinating. You're bringing up a great point. Players will have good things to say about him. He's a unique guy. He, he, he is, he's aloof. He can be very difficult. I personally think there may have been some elements of, uh, I want the damn ball, like a lot of prima donna receivers. All of the great receivers pretty much are this way. I think there's an element of that to Keon's game. But you're 100% correct when you say no matter what I'm telling you about what I think the, 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 the negatives are of Keon Coleman, I think you're right. His teammates, if asked, would say, oh, no, we love him. Because we witnessed it at practice. He walked up to young receivers he doesn't have to talk to. He doesn't need to, to coach up. He's, he's this close to realizing his dream and going to the league. What do I care? This kid's never going to get on the field while I'm here. And just because he's a football player, he would walk over and say, hey, do this with your hands. Do this with your feet. You need to do this in traffic. You need to run this a little more shallow. We saw all of that. Well, there's a difference, though. Like, this is the thing that only if you're in the locker room do you know what, right. what side of a fine line he walks between I want the ball and it's a problem for the locker room. Because I don't think it was a problem for the locker room. I think when uh, you're good and you're the best option, it's okay to say, hey, you know, don't forget about me. Don't forget about it's me. It's a fine line. If it you're is. hurt and you're saying that, it's a little bit more difficult. Sure. I Yes, 100%. But <laughs> the stereotype of the prima donna receiver, I think, exceeds what Keon Coleman was in terms of one. I'm not making him out the stereotype to be, is yeah. a problem, a cancer on the sideline. Well, Deshaun it, Jackson. Okay. Well, but here's the deal, or, well, much worse than that. You can go with uh, – Antonio Brown or any number of other guys that are well, like downright that dude's yeah. that dude's certifiable. Yeah. T.O. was a great player, but geez, man. Got Again, old, I don't think he rises to uh, the of level of any not. of that. I'm not saying that, but there are levels. Diggs. Catch the ball, man. Um, there's there's moments. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> I would be surprised if that. he was that level. As, I'm not yeah. saying that. I, I I just think there's an element of it. I think there's an element of it with every wide receiver in the league. They want the ball. That's how they make their money. That they got to get the ball. They got to get targeted. They, they get pissed when they're not. For whatever you know, this is the balance that a quarterback has to deal with all the time. It's tough. Uh, there's one football, and you got other guys who also want the ball because they too want to get paid. I this is a critical combine for him. I, I think he's got to have a good one to to break into the group that I talked about. Whether you know he's not going to be ahead of Harrison Jr. or Neighbors. And he's not going to be ahead uh, of the Washington receiver. But he, from there, he could be the fourth. He could be the fifth. Depending upon that 40 time, he could be in that he's number not, three, he, number four position. Well, yeah. four, I'll give you four. I, I don't think he breaks the top three at all. I don't think he runs a sub four, five, four, four, five either. But if he did and it was laser time and you saw, whoa, Keon runs a four, four, one. Are you or a four, four, two? Well, like, it would piss me off because it would, I mean, I'd be happy for him. But sweet Jesus, he was the slowest guy on earth for the last six games. He's pretty quick on that first slant for the uh, in the LSU game. Yeah, it's one movie. The slant, gone. the first game of the year. I'm yeah. talking about the last no, six. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> I mean, he could run a time. He could. He could. He, yeah. he could. yeah thought, so, well, listen, he he's been timed. He was timed at Michigan State. I think at four four five. Was he though? I, I don't know. Like you know, that's, sorry, I'm sorry. When like a college does it, I'm like, are you really like? Like is Michigan State going to put out there that? Oh well, you know this this kid is he's actually running four five seven now. He claims four four five. Like I don't know. I, I just I'll tell you that the scouting write ups that you can look up have a time that is cited for Michigan State more than one. Yeah. 
independent sites. Now that Michigan State could be lying. That's what I'm saying. A lot but, of these, you know, but that was he a, runs 22.7 miles per hour. Was, like, get out of here. But it was four four five is what he was listed yeah. as. That's that's the information. Now listen, they, he's got. We'll find out. It does. They could have written four two. Yeah, we, we, we're gonna I'm, have to see. I'm just saying. Sometimes there's a little PR from uh, from the. Remember, it, we, it used to be novel. We covered it when it was novel. The Rocket Man works for Jimbo, and yeah. he's got the vests on. Right. You know, yeah. they can't wait to share the data. Yeah, maybe they. Uh, maybe it's like a, a player's height listing. Well, yeah, that's five eleven. Yeah, he ain't five eleven. Right. They would do that with certain guys. You'd be like, man, listen, that dude is nowhere near five eleven. <laughs> he is. He's. He's shorter than Tom. I was standing next right. to the guy yesterday. I'm there's, 5'11". There's no and chance. There's no way, man. <laughs> He's got cleats on. I got flip-flops <laughs> on, and I'm still towering over this dude. Um, Keon's legit tall, though. He's 6'4", so that, that's that that's real, and we know that's real. He's a tall, big dude. I'm rooting for him. Several. He kind of is emblematic in this draft of a lot of guys for this FSU group that we could extend out to, say, 10 that are going to get drafted or have a real good chance to get drafted. I think the combine and interviews and workouts, the pro days are going to be very important for a lot of these guys that are either tweeners or they've had a year of success as opposed to two or three on top of one another building to this moment. They've, they've had this outlier year where is that who they are? Or on a team that was surrounded by talent, did they really shine here? But now individually, they may not be what the numbers suggest they are. I have a sneaking suspicion that this year's draft for Florida State is going to provide maybe a handful or maybe a little bit more of pros' pros. Now, I want to see yeah. if you agree with that. Like dudes, Bernardo Green is going to be a pros pro. He might be the best one. But I'm saying he's going to be yeah. a, he's not going to be a superstar. He is a pros pro. He'll be a good player in the NFL. He'll start for a long time. Yeah. He'll get a lot of run. He'll be in the league for a long time. You're going to be looking up six years from now. Like, Bernardo Green's still in the league. Good for still him. Still starting. Like He like, might have yeah. one of the longest careers in terms of because a starter. Because he's really but, physical. He's handsy. Yeah, I just... I don't know about how many dudes are going to be picked top 50, top 90, day two. You know, no. the cutoff on day two versus the week, the Saturday where we cram in the rest of the rounds. But I, I think this is going to produce maybe a half dozen of dudes that are just going to be there a long time. Solid pros. Yeah. Yeah. Solid pros. Uh, but what it, it, it'll be fascinating because it will tell you some things about this team. This team had more balance, more depth than a lot of people thought. It also maybe wasn't as talented as a lot of people thought. Those two contrasting things can be true because so many of the guys that we thought were going to have banner years and be stars and get drafted in the first three rounds got hurt and really didn't have an opportunity. Johnny Wilson wasn't great. Johnny Wilson had he missed two and a half to three games in total. If you count quarters and pieces, he also is not a burner. He drops too many passes. Where's Johnny Wilson go? I don't know. It takes one team to decide they really love 6'7", and the fact that he's fast for 6'7", and if we can get him to catch it a little bit more consistently, then he's a matchup nightmare because he's 6'7". It takes one team to say, well, I'll work with that. Well, and I love a jet sweep to Johnny's side because he's going to He's going to block. Somebody. He's going to yep. block, and that matters. He's going to get drafted. That's not my point. But, I mean, he doesn't rank anywhere near as a wide receiver. He's way down the list if, at any one of these places. They're not all out to get FSU players. <laughs> Every The NFL is a different animal altogether. We know this. We see this all the time. A kid can star in college and not – not make it in the NFL. We see kids that are just role players in college become stars in the NFL when they have packages produced just for them, unique sets of circumstances. So I this is a, a, an intriguing draft on two levels. Lots of guys have something to prove. Lots of guys may prove to be better than people thought they were. And there's a, a large number of them for Florida State fans to watch closely who need to have good a good weekend. They need to be good Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That interview room is going to make a difference for a lot of these guys. I mean, there are very few people who can get away with just being whoever they were in college and don't need to do anything much more than that. Marvin Harrison Jr. has already told everybody, I'm not running, I'm not jumping, I'm not lifting, I'm not doing a damn thing. Suck it. Take me as the number one receiver because you know that's what I am. I'm not doing a damn thing. I'll be there in an interview. 
That's all you get. By the way, the NFL is scared to death of this. The NFL is frustrated because this happens in other leagues. The NFL, this is a commercial enterprise. Everybody watches this stuff now in ways that we never imagined, right? If this is the beginning of something much bigger where superstar players go, I've got all the leverage. You've already seen what I am. I don't have to run for you. I'm not going to the cattle call. I'm not jumping up and down and doing all this dumbass stuff that's going to hurt my stock. As a football player, you saw I was the best wide receiver in the country. Right. Uh, just go ahead and pick me or don't. Yeah, I can't win for coming here and running. I can't win. All you could do is poke holes in my resume. Well, yeah. I have a bad day. Like you said, I just have a bad day. I mean, that's not who I am as a football player. I slipped at the start. You're going right. to hold that against You're me? You're going to cost me $6 million guaranteed? Right. Right. There are very few people who can do this. Marvin's one of them, though. Marvin's like, no, I'm not doing it. Kudos. If you're that good. <laughs> well, I will show up for interviews with this list of prepared questions. Yeah. And you can judge my tone. <laughs> yeah. But these questions are the only ones I will answer. These are the eight questions you're going to ask me. And then I'm going home. Will, will, you, uh, will, you, will you at least give us a vertical? No. No, I won't. Will you give me 2000 per diem? <laughs> In 2K per diem in Indy, that'll go me put, a long way. Put, put on the tape, see what kind of football player I am. Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, or Chat TV. Your local news now. Three people have been charged in the shooting death of a man at the new apartments near Faceville Highway in Bainbridge on Sunday. O'Hara Reginald Thomas, 23 years old, was killed outside of his apartment located in the 1400 block of Avenue A. So far, the investigation found that Thomas was arguing with his girlfriend and some of her family members. The argument escalated and Thomas was shot several times by Anthony Tyrone Chandler. Anthony is the brother of Thomas's girlfriend. The Thomas County Sheriff's Office is warning residents a string of reports that out-of-state contractor Acura Black Top paving is misrepresenting prices. So far, the office has received nine reports alleging business misconduct by the company. A Thomas County woman was charged nearly $24,000 for a job that a local contractor would have completed at no more than $8,000. While the business practices raise questions, there's not much TCSO can do for the impacted residents. This is Rachel and A with your Real Talk 93.3 Local News Update brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. High temperatures reach up to 80 this afternoon. Under overcast skies, southwesterly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Slight chance for showers tonight. Lows level off around 51. Cloudy skies expected. Highs level off around 69 tomorrow. Cloudy skies expected. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 76. I'm Greg Tish here to share one of my favorite TCC stories. In the summer of 1966, Eugene Lamb wanted to stay in shape before leaving to play college basketball in Louisiana. So he jogged to Tallahassee from his home in Midway and helped lay the bricks for the first building on what's now the TCC campus on Apple Yard Drive. Today, he is a longtime member of the TCC District Board of Trustees. It's no exaggeration when we say Trustee Lamb helped build TCC into what it is today. TCC thanks our community for 58 years of support. We look forward to moving into the future together. So everybody knows, Eddie, that you are a spectacular cook. Of course they know that. If they go into Bumpas, the food is always good. I mm -hmm. mean, everything on the menu. Mm -hmm. Everything at Gordo's is delicious. I always, of course, get the, what, the bungalow chungla, as I call it. The bungalow chung, Jeff. Is that the, what, what is the pork? The Banco La Chung, oh, Jeff. Okay, the Banco La Chung. It's delicious. All these things, all the items, yes. everything you do, a, a master cook. But, sir, I would ask you, what is a skill that you possess that you're particularly proud of that nobody would know and that, uh, that you could share with us here? Growing hair, Jeff. Growing hair. You're an asshole. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk 93.3.
themselves a great uh, service. And uh, the years that they had and the senior bowl stuff, then they carry it on, do a great interview. Next thing you know, they stormed up the charts from where they were when they got to FSU. Uh, so today, for uh, defensive linemen and linebackers at the Combine, uh, they do the ortho exam bright and early. So we're getting tested right okay. there. Yeah. Um, then they do media interviews. Uh, then they have a NFL Players Association meeting. Oh, those guys are going to be like, come on, man. Make sure you have a fall guy. And then they do team. Inter- that was one of the greatest ever. Yeah. Chris Carter. Thank you, Chris, yeah. for telling on yourself. All timer. Uh, and then they do team interviews. So, you know, depending on what you are as a prospect, you're either really nervous early with that ortho exam. So you've broken seven bones and you're hoping that those have all healed up well. Um, or you're like, man, never had a broken bone in my life. Feeling good. Let's go test them. I'm thick boned. And then there's the, uh, there's the team interviews. If you're a stuttering wonder, you're nervous as hell because that doesn't play well. Otherwise, you're like, oh, please. Well, versed in many subjects, ask away. So we got the extremes. <laughs> These teams have to prepare for all. Hopefully, they're not still asking people whether their mothers were hookers. That was a classic. Didn't the Dolphins do that? I believe it was the Dolphins. I believe it was yeah. the Dolphins, yes. Was it Des Bryant? I believe it was. Yeah. Yes, that was. that's a toughie. I think they said, is she still a hooker? In some ways, that's worse. And it, oh, it is? In a, <laughs> every way. <laughs> yes. Come on, guys. <laughs> I can't believe somebody thought, I'm going to ask him this one. It's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cosign. Yeah. Is, his, is his mom still a hooker? Is she out on these streets? Uh, yeah, I, that's a that's a toughie, man. It was a young assistant named Hugh Freeze. <laughs> I'm just genuinely asking. He was hoping. What's her number? Yeah. I'll ask her myself. Uh, yeah. Good old Hugh. He found God. It's all, it's all good. I'm sure he did. Uh-huh. It's genuine, Tom. Stop. You're so cynical. Uh, the church of Dale Mabry. There it is. Many a man. From there, uh, if you must know, the order is defensive line, linebackers, defensive back, tight end, running back, quarterback, wide receivers, and then offensive line and kickers uh that that's the uh, top to bottom order of these things and defensive line linebackers today db tight end tomorrow aforementioned wide receivers since we were just talking about it i wanted to give you the idea it's the following day so we'll get them i guess uh friday so the combine in terms of start to finish length is rivaled only by acc football kickoff it is unbelievable how long it goes Serious talk, though, the NFL has to be petrified that more and more players are going to say, you know, I stand to lose more than I stand to gain by doing all of this. Now, again, it is a very small group of players that are good enough to opt out. Uh, That's true in the NBA, too. I know certain NBA workouts, when you go to the combine, players will be like, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm the number one prospect in the country. I projected to go top three in the draft. I You know what? The tape is the tape. I have a 40-inch vertical. You've seen it. I've shot the lights out everywhere I've ever been. I'm not doing any of this for you. I think it's fair, though, from the consumption side. I know that there are a lot of fans of the the fan base who has, like, the number one pick or the number two pick, and they want to see what quarterback they're going to get. Yeah, there's a segment of viewership of the Combine that is that fan base starving to see who their next guy is going to be, work out at the Combine. Sure, of course you want to see it. Doesn't mean I got to do it. But I really think the viewership of the Combine is more for the diehards who are wondering about pick 17 or their 75th pick in the draft or college fans wanting their kids, you know, from their own institutions to have a really good weekend. Like there's a time for the superstars. If they're not there, you're losing viewership. Like when quarterbacks are hurt on Sundays, their viewership goes down. I don't know that this actually hurts the Combine's viewership. Yeah, because the diehards are going to watch either way. And that's who watches this. Some of those quarterbacks, the top quarterbacks in this won't throw at this. They're like, no, I'm not going to throw. They'll probably throw on their pro day with their guys. With their guys. With their their script. It's their control. Yeah. 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 We were fortunate enough, you and I, to be standing on the sideline for Jameis's pro day. And I tell you what's interesting about it for people who don't know, who've never been to a pro day, 
or even if you've just seen footage from afar, there is a, there's an intensity to those things. There is a thickness in the air. You can feel it. There's a lot riding on it. And it's not just because of the player. In this case, the player was Jameis Winston, who was projected to go number one in the draft. So there's a lot, you know, if he has a bad day, that could change things. But it's because there are guys out there that he's throwing to that are trying to get looked at. Yeah. There are guys yeah. out there who need to catch the ball. There are guys out there who need to run good routes. Running like, into the NFL network set. <laughs> that was the best of all time. It was actually a really nice throw. Yeah, that just they were set up terribly. Pow! Christian Green, I think. Oh man, he took those pitches out. It was something to behold. We were laughing. But it you're right. It doesn't feel like football. It well, doesn't. It's not, of course. It's but eerily quiet. It feels like a six footer on 16 on a Sunday that, man, I, if I'm going to hold on to this one shot lead, I got to make this here. I got to make it now. And the whole crowd falls silent and watches the putt. My favorite part in particular was the fact that we were watching a quarterback. If you're if the guy that's hosting the pro day is a running back or a wide receiver or a linebacker or somebody who has a chance to go top 15, but not number one and isn't at the most important position, what you don't get to hear is the sound of the ball off the hand and the silence in the practice only facility allowed for us to hear the ball come off the hand that that you hear just it is unreal when you hear guys can spin it that's what they're talking about the way Kurt Warner was standing there and turned and smiled and looked and it was really cool just because he smiled at the sound of it hour number two forthcoming stay with Widden Glass has been taking care of business since 1945. When you call Widden Glass, you're dealing with experienced, reliable professionals who offer only the best. Like Widden's top-of-the-line bath enclosures that provide style and luxury at an affordable price. Eye-catching storefronts are a specialty at Widden Glass. We'll help you design it and install it. Widden Glass, the first name in glass replacement. Call 222-5781. You probably already know that Pinch a Penny Pools and Spas is your one-stop destination for all pool maintenance needs, offering everything you need from chemicals, cleaners, vacuums, nets, and more. But that's not all. Pinch a Penny also carries a huge selection of premium hot springs, hot tubs, paired with easy financing options, making these luxury hot tubs affordable for everyone. And if you have an older hot tub and you're worried about the hassle of removing it, worry no more. Pinch a Penny will not only remove and haul away your old hot tub, but also offer a trade-in value for a credit towards your new one. So why wait? Visit Pinch a Penny's 12,000 square foot showroom today on Greer Road and discover how effortless and affordable owning a fantastic hot tub can be. Find out more at TallahasseeHotSpring.com. That's TallahasseeHotspring.com. Tax Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. This tax season, you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data and a Samsung Galaxy A14 included when you buy an extended silver unlimited plan. So you can give your janky phone to your kid. Switch to Straight Talk for plans starting as low as $25 a line per month for four lines. Find us at straighttalk.com. For network management practices, visit straighttalk.com. Device offer ends 41424. Online only. Family plan discount with four lines, all on the Silver Unlimited plan. Taxes and fees apply. This is Scott Trout of Cordell and Cordell. There are a lot of great dads out there. Sometimes those dads get divorced. For more than 30 years, we have represented men in divorce, confronting the pitfalls that could devastate your finances or harm your family relationships. While every situation is different, our goal is to get the best outcome for you and your kids. Set up a consultation and take the first step. CordellCordell.com. Lisa Cargis, Florida resident partner. Scott Trout, licensed in Missouri, Illinois, and Georgia. Georgia only. 904-323-0000. One independent drive, suite 2200, Jacksonville, Florida, 32202. Paid for by Cordell and Cordell. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Coming up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show, live and local on Real Talk 93.3, WVFT, Greta Tallahassee. 
the latest betting odds and line movements from Vegas. This is your action update. Now, here are your latest lines from our guys in the desert. Florida Gators, a 13-point home favorite against the Missouri Tigers today at the O'Connell Center. The Tigers have dropped 14 consecutive games. Stetson in Jacksonville, the Swisher Gymnasium, a pick'em total 136. North Florida, the three-and-a-half-point favorite over Florida Gulf Coast. 144 the total at the UNF Arena. College baseball coming up today. Jacksonville, the dollar twenty dog at home against Georgia Southern, minus 150. The NASCAR Cup Series at Las Vegas Motor Speedway for the Pennzoil 400. Kyle Larson, the four to one favorite. William Byron and Denny Hamlin are both plus 850. Get your free VSIN subscription right now at VSIN.com. For more sports betting news and information, go to VSIN.com. Mike Sun at Real Talk 93.3. Wendy's new breakfast two for $3 Biggie Bundles let you create your own delicious combo. Choose from a sausage biscuit, egg and cheese biscuit, small seasoned potatoes, and a medium hot coffee. But it's obvious which combo is the best. Sausage biscuit and small seasoned potatoes. Well, maybe it's the fresh cracked egg and cheese biscuit with a medium hot coffee. Or two savory sausage biscuits. Yeah, whichever you pick, you can't go wrong. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new two for three dollar biggie bundles. Limited time only. U.S. price of participation may vary. Not valid in a combo. Single item at regular price. Imagine your team always looking and feeling their best in high-performance technical workwear. Cintas can make it happen. They have garments for almost every job imaginable. And with the Cintas workwear program, you get freshly laundered garments delivered every week for everyone on your team. Great garments without the bother of laundry. That's a real perk for employees. Find out how Cintas can boost team image and morale. Visit Cintas.com. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the workday. The most common form of treatment for the arthritic joints is normally cortisone injections and gel shots and over-the-counter medications. And most patients have tried all of that and are still in pain. Every day, Dr. Aaron Wolkoff, a QC Kinetics medical director, meets patients who have exhausted every method to get relief. They've been told surgery is their only option. They want to stay away from that path and they come to us almost as the last hope. So we're using our own body's properties to to help manage pain, to help slow arthritis down, keep the patients active with no downtime and getting back to what they enjoy doing. I mean, I love what I do. QC Kinetics regenerative treatments from our board certified providers help heal and restore aching joints. No surgery, harmful drugs or downtime. Call for your free consultation today. Call QC Kinetics, 850-391-4280. That's 850-391-4280. 850-391-4280. Social Kitchen is now open on Cary Forest Parkway near Ology Northside. Tallahassee's only premier market where you can receive the famed Snake River Farm steaks and premier meats. Social Kitchen also has chef-prepared meals and sides ready to serve in just under 20 minutes. Perfect for those very busy springtime weeks, weekends, you name it. Hosting some people at the house. Hey, Social Kitchen also has build your own charcuterie boards and catering. Stop in and visit Social Kitchen today or visit us online at socialkitchentlh.com. Social kitchen tlh.com we all want more energy more strength more results well welcome to orange theory fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today backed by science orange theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone spiking metabolism and increasing energy orange theory fitness is a -a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy visible toning and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours experience more vibrant life today with orange theory fitness find out more go to orangetheoryfitness.com Broadcasting live from Florida's capital city, this is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk 93.3. Now, stop what you're doing and listen closely. It's time for the Jeff Cameron Show in 5, 4, 3...
And if you've been in an accident, call Tyson Legal Law Firm at 813-803-0733 for a free consultation. Just like that. It is the Tyson Legal Chat. How about that, Tom? That's what they do. That's what they do. Worst accident you've ever been in? Single car accident? That was you spinning out in the median going 70 on the interstate after a rain? Yeah, the car was fine. So technically it wasn't even an incident of any but kind. But it scared the bejesus out of you because you were on the cusp of death. I'm sure I that I was going to die. Yeah, that's yeah. that's probably one, right? In fact, I was convinced. I'd made peace with it. Yeah. In the, it's it amazing slow what motion. you could do in, slow in motion. one second of time when you feel like time is up. Uh, but probably the worst accident I was in was uh, when I hydroplaned and rear-ended um, the F... Uh, the, what was it called? Expedition? I think it was a Ford, yeah, Expedition, Ford Expedition with a steel bumper with my uh, old Ultima. And it was total. I remember when that happened. Yeah. But that wasn't that bad, right? That wasn't the, I mean, I, the car was total. The car was total, but the cars can be total without you ever being in real danger. No, yeah. The only thing that happened to me was uh, my fingers got burnt by the um, the airbags. <laughs> like they were pretty well scorched up, up my hands. Ouch. But, yeah. It was my fault, though. I mean, you know, it was the rain's fault, really. I wasn't speeding. It was pouring and you were driving too close. Somebody said, no, I really wasn't. Yeah, um, I had to have been. It was a hundred. <laughs> no, man, it was between a hundred and two hundred feet of just skidding. You're on the, <laughs> I just laughed because I made Matthew laugh. He, yes, he's laughing. <laughs> I I'd admit it if I was driving yeah, too close. Was, Somebody yeah. said about a month later, "Why didn't you pull the e-brake?" I'm like, "Thanks, man." Oh well, I didn't think to. No, you don't have time, man. You don't have time. Uh, by the way, my man Valdez Scantling, Lakewood High School, got released by the Chiefs today. They'll save them 12 million bones. <laughs> what? 12 million dollars. <laughs> he was worth 12 million. Uh, that the was salary not, cap to the salary that cap. That was not a decision. That's easy. Yeah, that's an easy one. Um, but he sees another LHS guy. They're everywhere, guys. They're everywhere. Whoa. Namely in the league. Uh yes, I failed. Z Chan. My man. T Lang in the house. Should see while should see you while you're down. Uh, First of all, I'm always down. Just yeah, a matter just of time in Tallahassee. Hang out, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we Thank appreciate you, Z Chen. It's great. Yeah, Tom is in studio. We are, we are, we are live. All of it's good. We're, we're here. It's going to be back on. This first time the JCS has taken place. How cool is it that the first JCS back is with you here live? Because yesterday I did some little headlines. This is the first JCS since I've been back from Las Vegas. I did win money, but not a lot. Okay. I won three hundred thirty dollars. <laughs> Did you do the uh, the first roulette wheel? I did. And how'd it go? I lost. Oh, okay. But I was so I was down a hundred. The, so then you made four hundred and thirty dollars. I actually made a lot more than that. At one point I was up considerably, but I lost a lot of that money because I kept gambling mm. like a man. And I had a great time doing so it. So you paid for one room night. There you go. Uh <laughs> I had a great time and uh, I got to go down to Circa. And I got to, I stayed at Mandalay Bay. It was great. My wife and I, we had a wonderful time. Sphere was awesome. All of it was very cool. We had a grand time. And admittedly, I left there with a little walking around money. So you can't beat that. At least I didn't lose $5,000, $10,000. At one point, I was up over $2,000, and I pissed it away. Mm. I could see why you didn't brag on the, the amount of money that you brought. But on. I won money. So, you yeah. know. But I could see why there wasn't a whole lot of gusto. Because, um, yeah, you win 330 bucks. You're not when you're up 2k. No, yeah. you could win 330 and you got on a heater because you were down eight, nine hundred dollars and you feel great. And you say, You know how much I won? Three hundred dollars because I was down a thousand, so I was on a nice little 12 hour run. There. My fate, this is going to strike you as odd. My favorite winning moment of the entire weekend in terms of winning money. This is crazy. This it's the little things in life, Tom. I walked into the sports book at mandalay bay there was a bartender named sal shout out to sal uh who i got to know super nice guy of course you know this already you've been to many sports books if you sit at a sports book bar so long as you're gambling they feed you drinks for free so i of course obliged and it was a video poker and a video blackjack and a video well, you know how they have all the games listed right so I was taking a break from the tables and I sat down to have a margarita and there was basketball on. In fact, it was Ohio state and Michigan state, which turned out to be a buzzer beater, a great shot at the end. It was a great game. And the game, there was like eight minutes to play. Sal came over, said, you, you're gambling. Cause he wants to know whether to charge me or not, you know? And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to gamble. 
So I put a 20. That's true. He wants to know if he's got a charge. Yeah, yeah, he wants Start to know if he's tab. got a charge or not. Yeah. So I put a 20 in the video uh, blackjack poker machine there. And I don't care. I'll get to Zaxby's. I didn't, I didn't care anything about um, the results of the $20 that I was putting in there because I was it was going to be made up for by the free drinks that I was going to have while I sat there and played out these little $5 hands on the blackjack table watching this basketball game. So one margarita became two. I was going to say, you didn't have one. Two margarita. became three. And uh, and so on. And so I had a good time and I watched the end of that game, but I kept winning these little five dollar hands mm. six hours later. And so this will make you laugh. I just kept winning. My wife wanted to go down and do some shopping or something. So she says, what are you doing? I said, I'm sitting here having a margarita, watching basketball, playing video blackjack. What are you doing? She's like, well, I want to go look at this store and then I'll come back and meet you. And then you and I will go do this, this and this. Sounds like you got two more hours. So then I was like, hey, I'm staying, Sal. And plus we're rolling Big River. What's the next game? So then we had, and they're all behind me. It's awesome. I was enjoying myself, having a good time, and uh, just kept winning. And then finally, I started getting silly. I was like, well, so now I'm up 100 bucks on these $5 hands. So then I was like, okay, well, let's bet 50. So I bet the so I bet 50 of the 100. This is I, how they get you, folks. Well, then I won it. I won that hand. So now I'm up big. And I'm like, well, I can play $5 hands all day and drink for free and watch all these games. This is incredible. And I'm only walking. I'm walking the strip. I don't have to drive anywhere so I can get as silly as I want to get. You could moonwalk if you want I to. Could. I could. I could. <laughs> I could shimmy. I could do whatever I wanted. So we, anyhow, I got up from the video blackjack machine and good old Sal and I had become best friends. And we watched a lot of basketball together. And he said, I'll see you tomorrow, Jeff. And I said, I'll see you tomorrow, Sal. And I walked out with $300 from the video blackjack machine. How great is that? It's like when an FCS team beats an FBS team, they get cut a check to do it. So you were drinking for free, taking up space at the bar, and you got paid $300 to do it. And I tipped him well. Sal well, loved of course me. You did. Sal yeah. Did the, yeah, he loved me. Bill writes, hell yeah, I'm staying, Sal. It never strikes me as a good decision in the long run. Well, Sal, Sal was funny. He's like, is the wife coming down? I said, she's off shopping. I'm good, Sal. Let's have another margarita. <laughs> I think that's the leader in the clubhouse for the heist and leak of chat so far for a funniest post. Good job, Bill. Yeah, it was good. Uh, I'm staying, Sal. <laughs> good times. I'm staying, Sal. Kid, I told you. Don't stay. Don't, don't do your Don't ever yourself. stay. Don't ever stay. No, I stayed and had a great time. It was, it was all good. Uh, Obviously, last hour we touched on it, recapping Florida State wins in basketball, Florida State wins in baseball. The wins just keep on coming. Tom comes back to town. It's wins everywhere. Wins everywhere. Wins. Yeah, nicely done. Uh, 54 Zaxby's in town today, guys. Mm. 54 to choose from. We'll see if there's more tomorrow. Uh, rumor is they're building 20 more in and about town. I was just showing off the cup while you were telling the story for the visual audience. I wasn't trying to force you into the Zaxby's read mid-story about meeting Sal and drinking for free so that was awesome yeah so was this zaxby's i had today it's great i saw you eating the zaxby's when i pulled up and i said my man is doing it right well i had very very light breakfast fare today and i know that we might be going and hitting some golf balls in a bit so i, I was like man it's actually going to touch up in 80s today i've been used to the the 30s probably need to get a little bit of food something better than just a light fare yeah, well, you know, that's why I said Zaxby's is right. never a bad time to do it. Um, <laughs> Steven wants to know the most I've ever won in a, in one setting. Is that a, is that a bet with a human being or do you want, you're talking about in Vegas uh, at a table? Not a lot, not compared to the high rollers, man. Um, nothing crazy. I did see a, a guy get approached. This is totally separate. I watched a sucker get approached by a lady of the night at the uh, at the sports bar there, at the sports bar. Was there. he aware what he was being? No. no. Okay. And when she got up to go to the bathroom, I told him. Now that's taking a risk because what if it was his wife? That would have been something. Can you imagine the moment that I'm like, listen, that's a hooker, sir. That is my wife of 22 years. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, but it was so I'm sorry, obvious. sir. What's your name? Des Bryant. This is bringing back a lot of terrible memories. I feel my like mom. I'm at, I'm That's at the, my mom. I'm at the combine again. No. Uh, yeah, no, I, 
it was fairly obvious and she was annoying. And I just, I could tell he was young. He didn't know any better. I was like, man, he doesn't know it. He's getting played. This is a call girl, sir. Run for the Hills. You don't want that kind of attention. Maybe he did. So what did he say? He kind of looked at me stunned. This is the freedom you have when you're 52 and the guy you're talking to is 24 and you've had a few margaritas and you're winning. You can just say things. And he's just kind of like, I don't know how to respond to that. But he, he actually looked at me and then I go, I go, I'm just, I'm letting you know, I, I couldn't tell if you knew. And he was like, well, I, I kind of, I was like, yeah, yeah. He was wondering. <laughs> Uh, but it was funny because uh, he was flattered. You know, that if you stay, if you sit any one place for very long, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Some are much better at their craft than others. And you, you're kind of like, I'm not so sure. Others you're like, well, sweet Jesus, honey, this is way too obvious. She sounds like Louie Anderson. She's not good (laughs) and subtle in her craft. (laughs) Uh, but back to the winning ways. Playing the slots. <laughs> Smoking a cigarette. The best ever is uh, when you're playing, if you're playing anything, but if you when you stand up from the table, you've been there a while, and you start walking, and you go through the area where they still allow people to smoke, man, people watching in that area playing the slots. They're playing, you know, nickel and dime slots. They've been there all day. They're rotund. There's smoking like a chip. You're like this. I could watch somebody die today. I could see somebody die if I sit here long enough and just watch this play out. I'm sure the pit bosses do. Oh, people have to kill over all the time. You know, 400 pound woman chain smoking cools, just steady playing dime slots. Or they fall into me when I'm just bothering nobody and sitting at a bar with you. They'll just fall into me. It was one of the, I wish folks, you guys had seen this. It was in Biloxi. Tom and I were together watching Penn State play football, trying to lose a That's game right. they had no business. It was the first Thursday night of the season. That's yeah. right. And there we are sitting there, and this woman got a little off balance. And we, we, we were doing the same thing. We were having a free beer while we were playing video that poker or whatever the hell we were playing. 100%. And I could see her stumbling into Tom, and it was so awesome. It was like slow motion. I didn't see it coming. I had I, no idea. I didn't warn you. And no. I'm, I'm like, this is going to be awesome. I want to see this happen. And Tom lurched forward, this fatty fault. Ooh. And I was like, yes. I thought I thought it was Eddie from Gordo's. Because yeah, Eddie was, was on his way over. Yeah. He was on his way there. And that would be something he'd do, like shake the chair and be yeah, like, what's up, you, brother? Yeah, you make know? you nervous. Yeah, he's a big, strong man. So I'm turning around like, hey, Eddie. And then there's just woman uh, on the fat floor. woman in pink, barely able to survive. She was struggling. And they were like, ma'am. The security ran over and this other lady was around her. I was going to try and help her up. And she was mad at me. I was like, why are you mad at me? I'm trying to help this woman off the ground. Almost like she thought you tripped her or something. It was uh, awesome. I watched the whole thing play out and didn't say a word. I was just busy laughing. Then turn and asking for another beer. I well, was like, look at this. And then the bartender said something to the effect of she's, she's been usually, there since 9 a.m. Right. But then this is not the first time she, this had happened to her. At this particular, she falls on a regular basis. He's like she falls a lot or something mm. like. That. <laughs> she falls a okay. lot. You don't say. Oh, she got right. here at nine. It's now eight p.m. Boy, she must lose a lot for you to not kick her out and ban her. Uh, it was it was an all time moment. Anyhow, there is my wrap up of Vegas. The sphere was incredible. We had a wonderful time. Plenty of great food. Great, went to a museum. Had a great time. All of it was good. The flight back was one of your flights which is uh, the one you told me most recently that you've had, which is that you were scared for the first time ever on a flight. I not, not yesterday, but uh, there was one that you had not all that long ago where you were staring at the uh, stewardess to make sure no, uh, flight attendant. She, they call she was over the intercom and her voice cracked. And so did the, yeah, the, and the pilot's nervous. voice had fear in it. Like yeah. this is not me yeah, reading not into ideal. it. He's no. like, folks, um, we need Buckle people. To sit yeah. Like, oh. yeah. You don't need to hear that. I, I got nervous too. The winds flying out of Vegas, you're you're in this little area where the mountains are, and you, it it yeah yeah. Yesterday we, we was dropped and we turned right, and I was like, ah, oh, this is not cool. It was a bumpy day yesterday, uh, specifically around Georgia. There was a front pushing through, and you knew it was windy last night at the ball game. Yes, it was beautiful at the ball game, but it was stormy and windy in Atlanta. So we had to circle around a couple of times with some with some bumps. wasn't as bad as uh that one time though. Circling around is nonsense. Yeah, 
There's nothing worse than the circling around. I get some. I wish they wouldn't tell us. You can you can tell most of the time, but I I don't want it confirmed. Well, so yesterday the pilot said that folks, we can't do the last collection of trash because we need to have the air uh, flight attendants sit down for their own safety. And I was like, okay, they do forty seven. That's checks for trash. By the way, they there's do. too many, too many checks. The way he said, he said they got to sit down for their own safety, which if you read a transcript of it, <laughs> yeah, you're well, like, no, I don't like this. If you read a transcript yeah. of it, you're scared. But that pilot said it with a, it's like oh, a firm handshake. Yeah. I'm like, all right, all right. Yeah, it's no he's, big fine. Deal. he's fine. It was the previous pilot. I was like, folks. All right. First of all, you can't have a guy with that kind of demeanor. No. Even if he knows we're all about to die, I need him to like convince me otherwise. He was David Cutcliffe, captain. Of Delta Airlines. That's who he was. <laughs> he was that, the dead fish. He was the dead fish. He was the dead fish. Or Brady Hoke. Better yet, Brady Hoke. Are we going to land? I don't know. I like our landing gear. It's the Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. There's nothing like relaxing in a hot tub after a long day. But if you don't have one, you're truly missing out. Hot tubs and spas have tremendous health benefits, besides just helping you relax. Like improving your sleep, they help with pain relief. They help to better your cardiovascular health, and so much more. And this season is the perfect season to finally buy what you've been wishing for. Pinch a penny pool, patio, and spas has the hot tubs you need for the price you want. Come shop our huge 12,000 square foot showroom and save today. There's over 50 hot tubs in stock right now. So you won't have to wait weeks on end for that delivery to finally come to town. If you're ready to relax, we're here to show you how. Pinch a penny pool, patios, and spas. Come visit our huge showroom at 2473 Greer Road. With over 50 hot tubs to choose from, you'll be glad you did. Have you been in a wreck on I-10? I'm Carrie Roan, shareholder and attorney at Fasic Brooks Law Offices. Our number one priority is helping you get the settlement you deserve after your accident. We can help find the proof you need to settle your claim fairly. At Fasic Brooks, we partner with Roadproof to record all interstate traffic camera footage from Jacksonville to Pensacola. If you've been in a wreck on I-10, our footage could be vital in supporting your case. Call Fasic Brooks today, 850-777-7777. Your friendly neighborhood bar and grill just got a whole lot closer to home. You can now order delicious Smitty's Tap House and Grill for delivery directly to your doorstep. Just visit smittystaphouse.com, click the order online button, and choose pickup or delivery. Attention In Florida, are you a victim of an auto accident? We introduce our live chat sponsor, Heisen Lika Law Firm, dedicated to representing injured clients statewide. If you've been in an accident, call Heisen Lika Law Firm at 813-803-0733 for a free consultation. Remember, there's no cost to you unless they win. Your interests come first with Heisen Lika Law Firm, the name you can trust for justice. Call 813-803-0733 now or visit HeisenLikaLawFirm.com. Heisen Lika Law Firm, your advocate in times of need. Place and recalibrate your windshield. But don't call your insurance company. Just go to SeminoleAutoglass.com and upload your insurance card. Hey, Jimmy. What? Did you know that Teslas come with a unique new car smell? They call it Elon Musk. <laughs> Better call Seminole. When I get home from work, I'm ready to relax. So I call Swain Pools and Spas and put my pool in the back. I call Swain Pools and Spas. Now I'm so good at the Truckloads of new and used Caldera and Hot Spring Spas are available now at Swain Pools and Spas. Don't wait. Get to Swain Pools and browse the best inventory to find the spa of your dreams. These won't last long, so come see us today. Just look for the huge sign on Tharp Street or call 386-7113 for Swain Pools and Spas. I know what you're thinking right now. Where can I find a place to get my car fixed and also check out some awesome new hot tubs and spas while I wait? Well, you're in luck. Because when you bring your car or truck in to get serviced at Tallahassee Car Care, it's under the same roof as Swain Pools and Spas. For tires, brakes, bodies, tune-ups, oil changes, and all the service you need to get back on the road, choose the certified technicians at Tallahassee Car Care. Drop by our shop on Bark Street or visit online at TallahasseeCarCare.com. 
We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. It'll be more fun tomorrow as, again, you've got – by the way, the baseball team now travels on the road. Should be a, a fun set of games with different teams from the Midwest getting after it. We'll see if they can sustain this winning streak. Obviously, you want to go as deep as you can uh, and remain undefeated. I referenced it last hour. Give yourself a little wiggle room for th when things get tough. But also, on the heels of a horrible campaign a year ago, anything you can do – to infuse a whole bunch of confidence and belief, although it doesn't look like they're lacking any of that based on the way that they react to success uh, on the mound. Uh, I could see that tempered. Uh, maybe that's just being old. All the yelling in the second inning isn't necessary after a strikeout, but uh, I will say that those guys aren't lacking confidence. They've got more than enough in the rotation right now. Bullpen will be a question mark. We'll see if some of those freshman arms help them out there much better defensively than they've been deeper better lineup, bat-to-ball, power, all those things exist. Picking it up, good signs that we're going to be enjoying baseball to bridge the gap to spring football and beyond. That, too, would be exciting. We need it. We'll see if the basketball team can get anything going here with the win last night. Uh, they needed it. They needed it, but really they got to win out pretty much to give themselves a, a shot at anything significant. It feels weird to say this, but just being up north and being embedded up north uh, – Florida State baseball, if you're not living in Tallahassee right now, and you just, how do I bridge this period of time till spring football? I'm telling you, this is something that you want to put on. This is something that you want to, you know, fire up the app because it's never on proper television and just oh, put the game buddy, on. I could do the old days thing. That, in, in this sense, though, living where I do, it's very nice. It serves, oh, sure. it serves a great purpose because I would I would have zero chance. Yeah, have back zero in the day, if you lived in the state, you were much better served by Sunshine Network, Sun Sports, all of those things. There was college baseball on constantly. You'd get every Florida State game, Florida game, Miami game. You'd watch series of those. You could flip around. You got it, right? It was awesome. But had you been in your scenario and had to leave, you would have got none of it. You would have been screwed. So the give and the take of the modern media landscape, that's what you have. And you have the ability to download anything, to watch anything on a computer, to have it on an app, to get inside information, to watch these games and on repeat if you miss it. It's all available to you at the same time. So few games now available in the world of college baseball compared to what they used to be, meaning in the state, sitting down broadcast proper, right? I, I, I don't like that. I mean, let's be honest. I'm not taking shots at anybody here because there's some people who are really good at it, even local. But when you flip around to watch college baseball, if that's your cup of tea, what you're getting is the university's feed a lot of times, and it's a kid trying to become a broadcaster, and most of them are terrible. Not all. Not all. Sometimes you hear a rising star. Truly, you do. And I'll be like, look at that kid's going someplace. But a lot of times you're kind of like, oh, my God, they're throwing anybody in there. Yeah, that's that's correct, especially as you play a lot of the teams from – the smaller institutions mm -hmm. around this region, which Florida State has always done a good job of making sure that they hit the road or welcome in some different broadcast crews. But I, you know, I do think and it's not just because we're on the airwaves here in Tallahassee. I don't think Florida State has a couple of good guys on on the weekend baseball broadcasts. Mm -hmm. Like Aria mm -hmm. does a good job. Aria does a very good job. Um, he did a good job too. I thought he and Chavez did of calling out how terrible replay was the first weekend. Well, or, sorry, this most previous weekend because you had a couple of five minute reviews for simple things. This and is an still ongoing got problem in college baseball, and I cannot figure out. Now, listen, replay is the source of much angst for fans everywhere, whether it's the NFL, whether it's in basketball, where they replay everything in the NBA to see if it's this level foul or that level foul or this level foul. Way too many levels of fouls, in my opinion. It either is or it isn't. But uh, the bottom line is there's all of that there. Um, but in college baseball in particular, 
It's as if they've never heard of the process of review. So it's like the second somebody says, let's take a look at something, the umpires are all, oh, oh, do you know how to work this? It is unreal the right. amount of time it takes them to see if a ball is fair or foul. And then they go into the dugout and they fire up a Packard Bell from 1996. And it takes a minute. You hear the, it's almost like Wheezy was for you as it fires up. That's the only way that it could take that long. I still have Wheezy. Do you? I haven't fired her up in years, two or three years since we left, but I, I should try it. Yeah, you should try. She's still there. She's in the closet somewhere. Good for Wheezy. That Amongst actually, many things that probably needed to be thrown out ages ago. That gives me hope that Wheezy's still out there. <laughs> she may end up. Well, I'm going to try. I'm going to try this weekend. I'll press it. There was a safe out call at first base. It was obvious. And it did take between four and five minutes. And it's just there are so many crews that are afraid to criticize the process. I was I was impressed because typically you get state sponsored media in this situation because it's what the university rolls out there. But this was an honest moment of this sucks. Awesome. Awesome. Very good. Something to note about state-sponsored media, Pravda, uh, is something we should all be vigilant about in the sports world. I'm not about to get political here. This is this is sports-related. This is the one-to-three slot, people. Uh, but here you go. I saw, you know, Peter King is retiring, right? He announced his retirement. And he did a good job uh, in explaining the process and why he was retiring and all this did several interviews, but he was asked um, several questions regarding NFL media today. And the, and he's, this is a man who's done it for over 40 years. And, and as much as I made fun of fat Peter back in the day, cause my mom would beat him in picks and all that. Uh, the bottom line is he's done a great job for a very long time in covering the league. And he had a lot of connections inside information over 40 plus years of covering a sport and being on location for these big games and at, at the combine before it was popular and all those things, he had access to coaches. They would talk to him he would talk to GMs. He talked to owners. So you knew the information he was giving and doling out for the most part was, was accurate or at least an opinion of somebody in the league. Right. Um, those insightful observations will be missed. Anytime any of these legends retire, it will be missed because these were guys who were real journalists and went about the, now eventually they morph into talking heads and other things, but they were real journalists at one time and they understand how the process works. Quote from Peter King, and I fear this about college too, by the way, I think this is where it's headed because teams want control of the message. Universities want control of the message Obviously, programs throughout college football have already enacted this. You see it in the NFL all the time as well. The Baltimore Orioles will put you in prison if you don't speak <laughs> to for their making, message. For making a reference about the Orioles beating the Rays at Tropicana for the first time in a long time, which was factually accurate and documented in the statement and wasn't the crux of the point, just that how well the Orioles have played lately. And they, yeah, suspended them. Thankfully, there was backlash to that. All right, quote, my fear also is the expansion of NFL media and contraction of independent beat people covering local teams. I don't go that far as to call it Pravda. I do think there are some excellent beat people working for team sites now. It does happen. But when Roger Goodell signs your paycheck, you know there's only so far you can go when stories get to be sensitive, asked Jim Trotter. And started thinking about this. That is true of Adam Silver, Gary Bettman, Rob Manfred, all of those guys. When it when they're writing your paycheck, you're not going to hear guys do what, frankly, I do or what others have done in the past in calling out Florida State or anybody else. Coaching decisions, making mistakes, whatever it might be. If you work for a network that pays one of those leagues for broadcast rights, for example, you're really not going to be free to say a thing. And eventually we all have to because journalism has died and you can't make a living being a newspaper man much anymore unless you're in a major, major city. And so the trend will be because of this, because the, the, the race for clicks and all those other things, we've just watched the further bastardization of very real and fair criticism take place of any of these teams or programs. And it's tough. Well, that, that's why I find as a consumer of professional sports that the press conference itself is the thing to watch because yeah. then you can derive for your own self about tone, about the way a question was asked. Was this unfair? Was this an ambush? So should I take the side of the coach or was the coach just being a jerk, lack of a better term, paranoid, 
Right. For no reason. You know, like watch these exchanges yourself. Yeah. Like that's what's replacing the beat report and the journalism. Now, thankfully, we do both here at Warchan TV, which you can like and subscribe to right now. Yeah, we can have the opinion, but we'll also bring you the press conferences. But that's that's the modern day. And we've got beat reporters. We've got a website dedicated to it. But in professional sports, it's so hard, man. Like, for example, our hockey team, there are no beat reporters anymore. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. The, the one from the, the newspaper, eh, they used to have two or three people dedicated to it. One for the athletic. That experiment failed miserably for the athletic. They've got a couple of teams that might have a beat reporter, but their goal was to have local sports everywhere and it failed. So it, Peter's right. It's in professional sports. It's waning. Yeah, it is waning. It's very frustrating because there were guys that did it and did it well, women who did it as well. And you could count on them. You know, if you ever went to like us sports pages.com back in the day, especially when I was starting out, you could get a sense of the local feel for a coach, a player, a team, how, because there were five to six beat reporters covering the Bucks or the Bengals or the Seahawks or whomever it might have been. So I can tell you I have an athletic subscription, and the main reason I got it was twofold. It was for Lightning Reports and Mets Reports because they had two really good beat reporters for both teams. The Lightning guy left, moved to Minnesota to cover the Wild. Now, the Wild has two beat reporters. That franchise is worth nothing, but clearly well, they're it's damn near the state in Canada, of hockey. It makes sense. It's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. known as the state of hockey. But on the way out, they were, you know, they assured Lightning readers that there was going to be some coverage. There hasn't been zero. There's been no coverage. Now, I keep it because the Mets have two beat reporters because there's <laughs> enough interest in baseball in New York. But you just you watch how it happens. And I'm sure Peter sees a lot of that because he, he takes the time. This is the thing he gets credit for. He takes the time to travel to each one of these camps, each one of these places. That is correct. He always gets on a plane and goes somewhere, which is good. Yeah, and his answer as to why he retired was that he said, quote, uh, during the coaching carousel and the documentation of who was looking at which coach and where and what was the best fit, he was trying to document all that and said at one point, you know, I just don't care. It's one of the great answers ever. He goes, I just don't care who any of these people hire. I'm tired and I don't care. It doesn't mean anything. Peter King has just decided that's it. That's the most honest answer you're going to get. That's when you knew. He said five years ago, I used to, I couldn't wait to get to the combine and talk about the rumors and who was going to get hired here and fired and who was going to be on the hot seat. And, what, and then he's like, the eh, last couple of years, I've kind of been like, yeah, okay, I don't care. Doesn't matter to me. I'll be dead soon. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. It's. All time funny. Attention, Florida. Are you a victim of an auto accident? We introduce our live chat sponsor, Heisen Lincoln Law Firm, dedicated to representing injured clients statewide. If you've been in an accident, call Heisen Lincoln Law Firm at 813-803-0733 for free consultation. Remember, there's no cost to you unless they win. Your interest comes from uh, first with Heisen Lincoln Law Firm, I should say. The name you can trust for justice, call 813-803-0733 now or visit HeisenLinkleLawFirm.com. Ice and Lincoln Law Firm, your advocate in times of need, offices Tampa. Your local news now. An 18 year old man from Crawfordville is dead following a crash Monday night. FHP said the 18 year old was riding a motorcycle that was traveling southbound on US 319, also known as Crawfordville Road. The motorcycle was approaching Oak Ridge Road West, and for reasons unknown, he collided with the back of a pickup truck. The rider of the motorcycle was pronounced deceased on scene. The truck's driver was transported by EMS for non life threatening injuries. Tallahassee police sent a dive team to search Lake Esther in the capital city Tuesday as part of their efforts to locate missing middle schooler 12 year old Lori Page. She was last seen near San Luis Mission Park in June of 2023, exactly a week after nearly 100 people searched the wooded park for a student. TPD quietly deployed a dive team to search the lake for her. The FBI announced a $15,000 reward in her case. It's the first reward law enforcement has issued to aid in locating her. This is Rachel and A with your Real Talk 93.3 Local News Update, brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. High temperatures reach up to 80 this afternoon. Under overcast skies, southwesterly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Slight chance for showers tonight. Lows level off around 51. Cloudy skies expected. Highs level off around 69 tomorrow. Cloudy skies expected. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. 
right now, 76. Hey, no fans. Our partner, ISF Inc., is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF, your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. So everybody knows, Eddie, that you are a spectacular cook. Of course they know that. If they go into Bumpas, the food is always good. I mean, mm-hmm. everything on the menu. Mm-hmm. Everything at Gordo's is delicious. I always, of course, get the what the bungalow chungla, as I call it. The bungalow chung, Jeff? Is that the, what, what is the pork? The bungalow chung, oh, Jeff. Okay, the bungalow chungla. It's delicious. All these things, all the items, yes. everything you do, a, a master cook. But, sir, I would ask you, what is a skill that you possess that you're particularly proud of that nobody would know and that uh, that you could share with us here. Growing hair, Jeff. Growing hair. You're an asshole. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk would be, since we were on that number for 10, right? You think 10, 11, 10, probably. I think it's 10. Somebody asked before answering that via Twitter. What is this? Players draft? Yeah. Players draft. I, I, I don't think we're getting more than 10. Yeah. Keem Dent is Keem Dent and Fabo. I think are the two that could put you over 10. Think Jordan gets drafted. Yes. Yeah. I think five on offense. That's, that's the way I get, to calculate and quick these days is there's five on offense. You've got your uh you got your quarterback, your starting running back, your two receivers, and Jaheim Bell. So there's five. You got verse, you got Fisk, that's seven. You got Deloach, that's eight. You got Renardo, it's nine. And then you've got Bethune, Fabo, Dent. Been interesting to see where uh there have been some some knocks on old uh, Deloach. Um, I think that has to do with football stuff and nothing to do with overall NFL caliber athleticism. Yeah, yeah. I think he'll get drafted he can, as a special because he can guy. he can really go. Yeah, a special teams guy and a rotational linebacker, and then you see what he grows into. Like, I think it was Ira weeks ago. We talked about this, but the Geno Hayes comp was a good one. His, yeah, undersized, uh, undersized can really run and run. Yeah. Uh, it's been frustrating where when you look at I, I, th- that, that you know how I am. I, I don't like to dwell on this. I'm really hoping that we see improved linebacker play this year. There were moments in time where the two linebackers, Bethune and Deloge, were good. The consistency from game to game, series to series, has not been there in some time at linebacker, in my opinion. Um, now, you know, the easiest thing in the world to do there is to, for me, obviously to blame Randy Shannon. And I do, but admittedly, I don't know that we've had uniquely gifted linebackers here in a while. Uh, We've had some talented kids. We certainly had kids who worked hard and played hard. We've had some kids that would suffice uh, that maybe within the league were pretty good players, but not NFL caliber soon to be, dominant figures at at linebacker we just haven't had it this is where i get excited I, i'm sad that it's not happening this week sad it's uh the final tour of duty you know we get we get access to that as media members you guys get to go late next week yeah 
to go see because I'm really fascinated to hear about Sean Murphy, how he moves at linebacker. I want to see what your thoughts are because I'm assuming you're going to meander that way. I'm going to spend look. most of my time looking yeah. over there. Yeah. Because Nicholson, one more year in the weight room, see what he looks like body type wise. He has the frame to be large enough to be he's a linebacker. He's good in coverage. He just got to get bigger. Yep. He's, so he'll do well in these drills, I would think, because he is good in coverage. But then from there, I think Justin Cryer's got a shot. I think he's got a shot too. The Murphy kid, I'm really excited about, yep. obviously. Anybody recruited the linebacker at Alabama. You know what Lundy is. He's a run-stuffing linebacker. That's what he is. Early down linebacker. If he develops into anything more, it's a pleasant surprise. But that's good enough. That's good enough. So if you're going to have a three, four-man rotation, that's good enough. But where are the other answers coming from, and how springy does Murphy look as a linebacker? I can't wait to hear the reports. <sighs> Buddy, that is, that's the first thing I'm going to look for elsewhere regarding Florida State. Asked this question a few times yesterday. I told everybody that uh, would listen, I don't think anything that is uh, earth-shattering or newsworthy in the sense of a change or a shift in tenor or information was going to come out of it. But just so you know, the ACC did file a brief in North Carolina courts yesterday in opposition to Florida State's motion to dismiss or stay its case. Uh, that is the latest of the legal filings and uh, not surprising. Uh, the ACC outlined why the case should, should stay in North Carolina, reiterating that it's appropriate uh, the appropriate venue for a dispute over a North Carolina contract to be decided. They filed suit against the Florida State Board of Trustees, as we know, back on the 21st, seeking declaratory judgment. We've already documented this. Don't want to get into the weeds with that. In defense of the grant of rights is why they did that. Florida State... Um, in the meantime, uh, in its motion to dismiss, uh, the Board of Trustees argued the ACC lawsuit was a race to the courthouse and fundamentally flawed. We talked about that. Um, the ACC, in response during this brief that they filed yesterday, argued, hey, listen, guys, we had no choice to file the, but to file that lawsuit first. We were trying to protect our grant of rights is why we did it. So they're responding to Florida State saying, Nice move on a Friday before we've ever, oh, this is not an adversarial relationship. Everybody is everybody. It's equal footing. But you get and file suit against us on a Friday afternoon before we file suit against you on that Saturday. Hmm, seems seems odd. Seems odd. Well, we had no choice once we got wind that this may be the direction you were going to. We have to protect our grant of rights. Quote, there is nothing improper about a party seeking to protect its rights, rights by filing first, the ACC argued. In addition, the ACC argued that North Carolina courts should not defer to the Florida court the way the Florida state is asking them to do because FSU has not met its burden to show substantial injustice. Here's all you really know, uh, need to know, really. Um, there is no court. The ACC filed its motion to dismiss. They did this. They wanted to stay in the Leon County court case as well. But no court hearing has been set yet for that case. Let's wait and see what happens there. It's going to be slow, I think, over the slow, next month or buddy. two. Yeah. But we'll see what – I think by the summer we'll have some clarity because at that point, you know, June, July, if it's not out in the public, we're going to catch whispers about a settlement. I mean, we want to be done. We want to be done. We want this to be our last year. So – that is when push comes to shove is right around the kickoff time. That's when we've heard some earth shattering announcements in the past, mm -hmm. but I think the spring might be a little slow. I could be wrong. Maybe we wake up tomorrow and they came to a number and they say $185 million sold Florida States out. That would be great. But I, I just, I don't think so. One thing we'll get into this tomorrow. I've been doing some reading about this and I find a few of these topics interesting regarding the private equity stuff that people have kind of tried to get to the bottom of. Um, it's not like, you know, in the beginning when you heard all that stuff, it's not like PIF. It's not like the Saudis. It's not like live. It's not that kind of thing, but people associate it. That's what they associate it with. That's been an internet joke. As I recall, Florida state's going to get Saudi money. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, it there there's there's stuff to get into here uh regarding um like the, the scope of the investment what it would be how much money and what it would be based on and some of those items have already been kind of listed um in public documents uh you can there are redacted spreadsheets that you can look up but where things not everything is redacted and it gets into the relationship uh the marketing and merchandising revenue that would that would go back to 
the the investor, the private equity, right? Yeah, yeah. So it gets into concessions at all athletic events and facilities. It gets into concert rental and sponsorships at the stadium. It gets into premium experiences at football and basketball games. It gets into sales and distribution of merchandise. So you start to figure out what it's for yeah. and how they make their money back and how much Florida State is asking for if 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 in fact that all comes to pass. It's a chicken or the egg thing where if you look at the cycle and you draw like the little, it's almost like a recycle sign. What's the gap in the middle? The gap in the middle is the fact that Florida state is leaving the conference. You don't get private equity without a guarantee that we're going to be in a conference where there's going to be greater revenue coming in. So, so you they can get, get their money back. They yeah. get their money back. They're not going to go into business on a hope. So the idea being that like if Florida State were to announce tomorrow, independent of these lawsuits, that they they've secured private equity and relationship, they're leaving, yes, that is the announcement that they're leaving. That that it's done. That it's in the past. You don't get this money without an assurance to the private equity group that they're going to get their money back because there's more money coming in from being in the Big Ten or the SEC. And that private equity group gets a stake, right? So it starts with a partnership. So there's a sale by FSU for a portion of its marketing and merchandising business to the, so like that's $3 million, let's say. And then what does that get you? That like that big picture. This is what we're talking right, about. It's yes. collateral. Yes. It's like, I, I need, I need the money up front. Here's what we're going to promise you over the next period of time. Now, if they can do it without private equity, they will do it without private Correct. equity, but this, it is not a, a full emergency measure, but it, I mean, it, it's a measure of a very motivated Florida State University if they have to enlist this. It also would hint to me that they, the number for the settlement's a little higher than they hoped. Like, I don't think you enroll the currently, help of, of, currently. like in today dollars. But the other thing I go back to is, and I think you and Andy Staples were talking about this, but let's not forget that Oklahoma and Texas are paying off. It's a lot less money, yes. but against future disbursements of revenue. That's correct. They didn't have to come up with the cash at the signature of the settlement with the Big 12. It was against future earnings. So if Florida State could settle with the ACC, and maybe they can't, because a settlement costs more money and we could we could pay less a lump sum now to get out of it free and clear. But if it's against future earnings, I don't know that you need a whole lot of help from private equity. I'm fascinated by this. And the one thing about the private equity stuff that we can get into is that the more you read about it, I'm no expert. And so I'm reading and trying to vet and ask people who are in the know. But the more that one of the things that scares people about that is the huge returns typically for the for the investing for the for the private equity group. They don't do it otherwise. And when you're just looking, you have to have a sample number and I'm not going to do the math here, but the partnership would yield, obviously, what Florida State wants out of this, FSU's interest in the partnership, but the investment group, let's say, would get somewhere in the neighborhood of, of by the time it was all paid back, 42% in return. Right, right. That's what I'm saying here is... It's massive. You don't get a yes from this type of lender, if, if you want to call it a lender. Like, you don't get a loan... Unless they know, oh, we're getting that it all. We're back. good for it, yeah. and we better be beyond proving that we're good for it. They're not going to say yes to a hope. So, the fact that they're enlisting this tells me uh, we all know we're leaving. It's just a matter of when. Yeah. But this is another point of proof that if we're enlisting the help of private equity and they're taking us seriously, they know that there's a new source of revenue coming, and it's called being in the power too. I can't wait. There are people going to be like, yes, sir. Don't mind if we do. We'll take a sweet for life. <laughs> <laughs> we own your ass now. Kind of fun to read about, actually. I was doing that last night. I was like, man, this gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And the more I read, the more I'm like, oh, I got to read this, too. And I got to read this, too. So I have some basis of understanding here. Makes sense, though. Quick side point. You know how things like this bother me. I was getting to the math of the include Jerion before I get killed for not including Jerion. That's when you get to 12 or 13 in total candidates. Yeah. But when I was listing out nine or but ten, we're gonna we're gonna concede that somebody will just not have interest in a guy that we thought they would, and they may have interest in another guy that we yes. didn't. Yeah, so I think it's a fair trade, but you got to add him in there because ten is a little bit. He's more getting comfy. drafted, by the way. That's what I'm saying. You get to ten a hell of a lot more comfortably with Jerry on Jones as part of your candidate list. Uh, he's getting in. He is. He's uh, he's going to get drafted. He's had a good year. He did well in workouts. He is long and physical he's got a chance he's gonna make it he's gonna end up having a better career man 
there's a certain guy on these boards sometimes who was hard on him. It'll be fun to see <laughs> just how, uh, uh, what he says. No, that's true. So we would both agree, like Jordan Travis would be the one that's most up in the air about getting drafted on offense because of health. Yeah, I mean. Like your other four yeah. guys are getting, I mean, Jordan, I think he's going to get drafted. But if you're if you're talking about percentage chances, yeah, yeah. Jordan would be the lowest. Okay, so on defense, that's five. So on defense, Jared, yes. Fisk, yes. Renardo, yes. Jerion, yes. Two linebackers and a key. Did you say Fabo? And Fabo, yeah. So there you go. I don't know about both linebackers. No, I'm no, I'm not saying that they're you're all getting about, drafted. You're I'm talking just, about I'm draft eligible. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So your yeses on defense are your two defensive linemen, mm-hmm. are Jerion and Renardo. Mm-hmm. Right? So you're at nine before we get into... Yeah. Will they? The, 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 they? the Jordan's thing is interesting. I, I hope he does. I hope he does. I mean, you know, he'll interview awesome. And if you take a flyer on him in the sixth or seventh round and you know you don't need him anytime soon and you can let him develop, be on the practice squad, he's going to be a pro's pro. For the right offense, he's the backup. You, Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know he'll be professional. I would love to throw him. If he's fully healthy, I would love to throw him an opponent in, in a weird spot. I've got a guy who's banged up. It's a short week or whatever. And I'd throw in Jordan at you. That's a tough dude to prepare for in a short setting because he does have a really strong arm and he has got a good arm. He's I think, well, the D Rob tape proved it. There's some mistakes about being late with the ball, he's but his arm, his arm strength overcame his, the hesitation. His, his arm strength is not negative. It's right. just not. Well, and the problem is the guy who's about to succeed. He's got a much better arm. Much better arm. Good God, that's an arm. Yeah. Good work out of you, sir. We'll do it again tomorrow from right here in these studios. Good work, director. Thanks for being here, everybody. It's been a pleasure to be back with you. Peace. 